Hey yo, the streets don't love you, the block don't either. Police put a price on your head and it's getting cheaper. Youngins in the hood trying to get rich off the reefer. This episode has been sponsored by U.S. Notary Agency. The power of attorney notary experts. Making mom's life a little easier. The conversation. I want you guys to interact with this conversation. Leave your comments. I know this incident has affected a lot of people here. So share your comments. Share your opinions. Let us know what you think about these incidents. Share it with the family. Okay, about 30 more seconds, we'll get ready to start. So I'll be honest with you guys. Um, this, this, this situation with Nipsey Hussle affected me. Um, I don't know, man. Like, a, a celebrity's death never really affected me the way this one is. I really don't understand why it is, why it's affecting me this way. It had me in the slumps for a long, but since the incident happened, to be uh, honest with you guys, it just, it, it just feels different from when Pog died, when Biggie died, Freaky Ty, and the rest of those guys, you know, a lot of people that put in work um, passed away. But for some reason, this situation hit me way different. I, I took it a lot more personal. You know what I mean? I took it personal. I felt like this dude, Eric Holder, uh, attacked one of my family members. You know, and I want to get at him. Not not sure where those feelings are coming from, but my 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 question to you guys, man, do you feel that <clears throat> when you hit a certain a certain status in your life, you know, a certain, uh, you reach a certain success. Do you feel that you should go back to the hood and help out and be in on a grassroots rep level, like really making your presence felt like Nipsey did? Do you feel that way do you feel that you needed like nipsey like if you reach a certain level of success because nipsey reached a very high level of success right and he still made his presence felt within the slawson crenshaw area do you feel that it was necessary for him to be there or do you feel that he can still have the same impact by uh, creating the businesses in that area, um, but he did not have to be ten toes down in the hood like that. You grew up in Baton Rouge. Now you live in Atlanta. Now, at what point did you actually move to Atlanta? Uh, I moved to Atlanta like uh, five, five, six months after my release from prison. After my release from prison, uh, I had to wait for the paperwork to get cleared. And I, and I moved straight to Atlanta like five, six months after my release. You did an interview with Rolling Stone and they talk about if you would ever live in Baton Rouge again. And you said, no, hell no, never. I would never live in Baton Rouge again. My past is too strong for me to go live down there. I'm always repping, I'm always shout out Baton Rouge. That's my hometown because I love it. That's where I'm from. But me living there, associating with the people out there, that's not gonna happen. Right. Can you explain that a little bit? I love your opinion on that. Um, you know, I, st I still talk to a lot of my buddies in Brooklyn, back in Brooklyn, and Brooklyn has changed, right? It's still, it's still a bit, you know, it's still going through its transition, but uh, the new Brooklyn has changed dramatically. And I know from the mentality of hoods, ghettos, that even if you... Even if you have a million dollars 
to construct a rec center for inner city kids which had games, you know, just a rec center to keep them off the streets, extracurricular activities to keep them active, um, study programs and stuff like that. Even if you donated $1 million to the hood, there's still going to be people that say, that nigga never gave me shit. Fuck him. And these will be the people that actually know you. These will actually be people that know you. Also, I was a target in Baton Rouge, you know, like, Baton Rouge is small, man, you know. But I'm the only one riding in, 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 in Bentleys and all these foreign cars, you know, you become a target. You know, not only you're a target, you're rapping about these people. You, you know, you, your house is ten times the size of, of their house. You know, that, that, that would make me, that would make me dislike me if I was on the other side. Because you know I'm, I'm I'm rapping about these people, I'm shining, uh, man. So uh, I'm cocky. You know I was a cocky asshole, man. You know, and uh, those people don't forget stuff like that, man. Uh, so I know that the jealousy and the hate in the hood and the ghetto is real. There was a saying that Jay Z uh, used to have. I'm not sure what song that's from. He said, if you shoot me, I'm brainless. If you, no, if I shoot you, I'm brainless. If you shoot me, you're famous. If I shoot you, I'm brainless. But if you shoot me, then you're famous. What's a nigga to do when the streets is watching? Flies keep clocking, waiting for you to break. Make your first mistake, can't ignore it. That's the fastest way to get extorted. But my time is money. I believe somewhere in psychologically that was in the back of Eric Holder's mind. Now, I saw the tape and I, I don't know why I continually put that tape, that video on repeat. I watch it and I watch it and for, for me, it's so stunning. Like, it's hard for me to like really understand it, man, because this dude walks up to him and he shoots him, right? He shoots him a couple of times. He starts to run away, and then he runs back, shoots him a few more times. Then he runs away again, then runs back to Nipsey, shoots him a couple more times, and then kicks him in the head. Dude, that, that right there, I, I, that type of hate and animosity, I've seen that in people's eyes, man. I've seen that in people's eyes. What up, Nipsey? The Nipsey hustle thing is hitting different for yeah, me. Yeah, it hit and hit and me And the hard. reason it's hitting different for me because it makes you question your own mortality. And of if something like that does. can happen to a brother like him, Listen, it can happen to any of us at any time. Boy, I think about dying every day. All right. I've been thinking about dying every day for a long time, for years, because I watch so many people pass, and I always, I always fantasize with the thought of, well, that man woke up that morning, and he got in the shower, and mm -hmm. he put his sneakers on and his new outfit on, and he went out... He got on his phone and called his people like, did he know that this was going to be his last day? Mm -hmm. You know, I always think about that. So every time I get up and it's like we got to step outside and, mm -hmm. and we got to go to the club and we got to get on a plane and go into a different city or a different country, something could happen. Right. And that's just the reality the reality of that. But the but the problem with, with his situation, and you know, for me is that do we make ourselves accessible to the hood because we want to we want to show the hood you know how much we care and we want to we want to be there for our community and it's like it's topsy turvy because it's like we want to love our hood because we that's where we come from mm -hmm. but do we want to keep it that real to the point where we so accessible that the danger the danger for us is just it's it's, it's it can happen right. you know and it's it's just it's just scary man it ain't good on no level. Now, now you, you, were one, you was one of those guys that would always go I back was, to the hood. I was. Now, do you move differently now? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Because at the end of the day, listen, every time I used to get something new, I would go back to the hood. I buy a Bentley, I buy a car, whatever, I go right back to the hood. Because we come from a, we come from an element where we want to show the hood, like, look, I'm still the same. Right. right. I, I, I want you, I want to inspire y'all. I want to pull up in the hood. I want to pull up on the block. I want to jump out. I want y'all to see this phantom. I want y'all to see these cars. I want y'all to see this jury. And I want to pull up and show y'all that we could get it. Mm -hmm. But it's as much as the hood love us, it's always an element that 
that that some people feel like you shouldn't have what you have or it should be they shot mm -hmm. it, or, or it should be you know it should be them mm -hmm. right and we got we can't trick ourselves to believe that it's that much love man you understand what i'm saying because niggas will kill you boy absolutely niggas will kill you and let me tell you something about niggas a nigga will put more emphasis and more energy into killing you than he would fixing his own situation. That's real. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's pain in the hood, right? So everybody in the ghetto, it's pain in there. So dudes is dealing with their own turmoil. They ain't got their credit right. They, ain't, they, they old baby mamas and all that. They ain't got nothing going on. But instead of fixing that, killing you will be on a top list. That, that'll be the thing to do. The number one thing on that list. And it's just, it's just... It's just sad. Yeah, now you're is. right. That's why I say in the hood, like hurt people hurt people. That's a fact. We all dealing with trauma. We keep That's redistributing this pain instead of dealing with whatever's going on in us. Oh gosh. Hold on. Uh, we got some comments. Shout out to you guys uh commenting by the way too, man. But this this one hit hard, dude. It hit really, really hard with me. It, you know, like more than any other that I felt like I really lost a family member on this one, you know? And, you know, sometimes I just, I just say to my, like, okay, I'll give you some real life examples, man. And, and these are my opinions, but I grew up in the hood. I grew up in the ghetto. I understand. I, I know some things, man. I've seen some things. I still see some things. And, some of the youngins that are out here, and, and shout out to the millennials that are rocking with the kid on Facebook. I know Facebook, they, they, they call Facebook the old people uh, social media. But um, shout out to you guys that jump on here to rock with me too. Um, some of you guys don't have OGs. Like I grew up with some OGs that put me on the game. And a lot of you guys are lost. A lot of the millennials are going into these highly toxifying uh situations and not really knowing the deal thinking it's cool to get some stripes to get some hood stripes you know what i mean a couple of notches in the belt <laughs> and that's not where it's at that's not where it's at i got a buddy who is very successful right and he was going to the hood a lot and i said look dude <clears throat> You have reached a certain stature in your life. You can't frequent the hood like that, like, like you haven't accomplished shit. People watch you. They see you move, man. And anybody that looks in the mirror and says to themselves, like, I haven't accomplished shit. This nigga accomplished a whole lot. I feel that he owes me something. I'm, first, I'm going to approach him and say, hey, yo, put me on, put me on to something, man. Let me get some of this this paper that you got going on, right? If you begin to deny that person that already has a bit of animosity towards you, you once you deny him, you add more fuel to the fire. You're gonna be you're gonna add more fuel to the fire. So I saw one day I went with him to the hood and I saw how Cass was looking at him. You know what I mean? And these are people that he grew up with and all that. And I, I saw the hate in them. I saw, I saw the, 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 their eyes getting bulgy red. You know what I'm saying? I saw, I, I, I saw the venom in their tongue when they spoke. You know what I'm saying? And when we drove away, I said, "Dude, you need to cut down on your frequency. Your hood don't love you like you think they do." Real talk. I said, your hood don't love you like you think they do. I understand you want to help out the hood. You can help out the hood. You can, you can fund certain projects, fund uh, not-for-profit projects, build businesses. But you personally, you should not be frequently showing your face in those areas. Why? Because you have evolved. They have not. Some of them. Some of them have not. And to them, you're the same nigga that grew up with them and ran the streets with. So there's no change in that. They don't see this new person, this evolved, you know, 
unicorn, eagle, butterfly, whatever you want to call it. They see the same nigga that they used to run the streets, break in the stores with, uh, get into fights with. That's who they see. And for you to come back to the hood and certain people are showing you mad love, certain people are getting money with you and they're not getting money with you, you're going to stir up emotions in them of self-hate. Self-hate. You're going to stir up some self-hate emotions that will force them to want to hurt you. And I kid you not, they, they approached him many times. They approached my brother many, many times. A couple of times they snatched the nigga chain. You know what I mean? A couple of, a couple of times they, you know, they stuck the nigga up. But he still had love for the hood. You know what I mean? And I said, bro, you, they're letting you know. When they approach you that way, they're letting you know that they will touch you. And I feel that Nipsey Hussle was way too successful to be frequent, frequently going to a spot so congested with mental anguish, poverty. I'm not saying that he shouldn't have gone there like once in a while he makes an appearance, but when he does make an appearance, he got to be heavily armed up. You know what I mean? He got to be secured up. He got to be, he got to have the body, you know, the body vest. He got to have the bulletproof vest on. He got to have some security, armed security and stuff like that. You a known man. You a known man. Dude, you're Grammy nominated, man. That's like, that's like upper echelon of success in your music. That's a fact. That's a fact. And that's what and dudes lash out, especially when they feel like they entitled. Yeah. They entitled to a, a job or entitled to, to be around you or entitled to you looking out. So you always start to hear things like, man, that ain't gonna do much. That ain't gonna do much. Mm -hmm. He don't do he don't he don't do enough. Right. Or or he ain't all that. You know what I mean? And just recently, me personally, I started feeling two years ago I started feeling like I wasn't doing enough for my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So so what I started doing was after Christmas, you know, just for no reason, I teamed up with Macy's and we started you know, I was getting $60,000 worth of brand new coats. Mm -hmm. And I was coming to my direct neighborhood giving them out. F me coming physically. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So when you do that, you start to, when you see stuff like that happen, you start to say, damn, am I putting myself in, in harm's way? Mm -hmm. If by, by making myself physically available, because the probability of something happening is higher if you in the area. Right. So you don't want to say fuck the hood, but then it's like, do you blame certain rappers for getting out the hood and never coming back? Mm -hmm. And what if you give back and don't go back, is that enough? It's you never know, enough, you know. though. It's <laughs> never enough. It's never enough because people want to be pleased in their own in their own way. And then I also think about how even on uh... That shows like you are you are now worldwide with what you what you got going on. So this brother goes and he assassinates my dude. Cold, cold blood. This is something that's been building up for a long, long, long time. You know, this was an execution. Like, this guy was, he was willing to get shot for this incident. Because anybody that shoots somebody, right, and, begin, and can get away, but instead of running to get away, he runs back to the incident, shoots the person some more, Runs away again, runs back for the third time, shoots him some more, and kicks him. And then this time, he doesn't run back the same direction. He runs an opposite direction. Come on. So should, should you, as a successful person, frequent the hood... To help the hood, do you feel that your presence need to be felt? Like, do you need to be there to help the hood? 
I don't believe so. I don't think so. I don't believe you need to be in the hood to help the hood. Because what if he wants to help multiple hoods? You know? But, you know, people like Nipsey, they're cut from a different cloth, man. Like, they want him there. They want him ten toes down. They want him, they want his presence felt. They, he wants people to be like, yeah, Nipsey is here. Like, he's with us. He's He got his foot to the ground. Imagine Jay-Z going to Marcy Projects. Imagine Jay-Z going to Marcy Projects. No security. No heat. No vest. He's just walking around. He's Jay-Z, a multi-platinum artist, world-renowned hip-hop artist, philanthropist, businessman. And he's going up and down Marcy Projects every other week. They'll clip him too. Because in the street culture, like here in Chicago, right, there is a lot of gangs. You have GDs, uh, Vice Lords, a uh, myriad of other, you know, uh, Black Stones. There's a lot of gangs. There's a lot of gangs out here. And I always said this, as much respected as Larry Hoover is amongst the OGs, these young bloods don't care about him. These young bloods would try to clip him to make a name for themselves just to get a rep. Y'all remember that song, Just to Get a Rep? He'll clip, they would clip him just to get a rep. Now you have this guy, this, this, I really don't understand how he was able to get the lawyer Chris Darden, the former lawyer from uh, O.J. Simpson, the former prosecutor. Chris Darden must really, really, really hate black people, dude. <laughs> he must really, really hate black people. Because now Chris Darden is representing a guy that took the life of someone who was damn near considered a messiah in this day and age. Did you guys see the march? They had Nation of Islam there, dude. The Nation of Islam was was in, in, in full regalia representing the brother Nipsey. There's been walks all around the country for Nipsey. And this is why I said Nipsey affected the whole world. Nipsey Hussle affected the whole world. So I don't believe he needed to be in the middle of Crenshaw like that. And I'm asking you guys, what do you, what have you learned from this situation with Nipsey Hussle? I could tell you a few things that I've learned in this situation. And maybe I, I already knew these things, but it woke me up on a whole nother level. You got to be careful with the Judas in your camp. And they're there, you know you have a Judas, if you have a large team, you have someone that that feels threatened from your success. I'll give you an example of people that have died in the hood trying to help out their hood, trying to make a presence in the hood, trying to bring awareness to the hood. You have rapper uh, Proof. You remember Proof from Detroit? Rapper Proof from Detroit, Eminem's guy. That was like Eminem's like best friend. He went to a, a club back in his hood in Detroit to show love. They killed that brother. What about Freaky Ty? You guys remember Freaky Ty from Lost Boys? Me and Freaky Ty. Hi, Pretty Lou, my man. Lost Boys. They killed that brother in his hood. 
And I know you guys remember Jam Master J. This guy went back to the hood, built a studio in Queens where he grew up to, in order to extract talent then give them an opportunity because let's be honest hip-hop this is why i love my peoples the deaf man you know hip-hop creates a lot of opportunities a lot of job for melanated people facts and when one person makes it they bring a, a very large entourage with them Eventually, the, the people from the entourage start to fall off, but they bring a lot of their entourage with them. A lot of people from their hood, their neighborhood, they, they, they give them jobs. They give, say, hey, you're part of street promotion. You're going to be part of uh, radio marketing. Hey, I want you to be in charge of the fan club. They bring a lot of these people with them from the hood, and that's what hip-hop does. But you, you had Jam Master J that built a studio, and he didn't have to do that. He could have built a studio in Manhattan. He could have built a studio in, in New Jersey away from the hood. But he built it inside of the hood. And they assassinated that brother in his studio. In his studio. And then you go back to the, these these Judas that are in your camp that that hate your success. They despise that you are successful and you're rising to the top. And they feel that, hey, man, I was breathing the same air as you. I was around the same parties as you. Come on, man, run some of that cheddar. Run some of that success over my way. And they feel that they you owe them. Just think about it on a business level. If you were to sell a product to a stranger and a person that you know, who's more likely to ask you for a discount? The stranger or the person you know? Who's going to be more upset with you if you try to charge them full price? the new customer or the person that you know be careful listen listen ladies and gentlemen there are signs out here and maybe sometimes we become too successful and we we lose our way and we try to forget those those days but those lessons that we learned are huge and is it's important that we don't lose those nuggets that those ingredients because let me ask you a question With all the good work that Nipsey Hussle was putting in in South Central LA in Crenshaw, he has kids, right? He's helping inner city people make something of themselves, give them hope, give them knowledge, wisdom. His kids become of age, it's maybe 17, 18 years old. Now they're frequently going to where their father has established a, a, a stronghold in, in Crenshaw. You don't think his kids would have been in danger? You don't think Nipsey Hussle's kids would be in danger after all the success that they have? It's always like that wherever you're from, you will get hated the most. You know, most rappers die in their own city, man. It's a fact. And, um, you know, you have haters who who was in school with you and, and they mad because they was on they was in that in that third grade class with you. But they don't have the same hustle as you. You know, they hate you for no reason. They hate you for they hate you for your success. If you was a local rapper and you and you didn't have much, they would love you. You know, and these people, you develop hatred in your own city. You know, if you go to you go to Canada, you go to New York. You from Louisiana, you don't have hate, you don't have people want to hurt you because they don't know you. You know, they don't know you, and um, that's why I decided to move to Atlanta. You know, if, if I'm dealing with music, this is a place I need to be. You know, uh, everybody rides foreign cars out here. I won't be pulled, I haven't been pulled over since I've been out here, but to take a picture and get an autograph.
I mean, they respect stars out here, man. They don't hate stars just because you're a star. They don't. It, that, that's how it is in Louisiana. If you if you if you if you go back, all Louisiana rappers, the big time, they was ran out of Louisiana, man, because of hatred. Baby and Wayne, you know, hatred, man. Master P, they ran him out the country club, man, just hatred, man. See, murder, he's in prison. Mac, he's in prison. You know, and 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 you just, it's it's just not a place to be, man. It, it's a lot going on in that state that, that that's not 100, man. It, that's not fair, you know, even from the laws, even from the sentencing, even from the education is poor. Everything is, every everything is, it's a, it's a hard state, man. And uh, I just wasn't with it, man. And, I, and I'll never move back down there, you know. I would never move back into that. I would be crazy for moving back to Baton Rouge. Like, it, it won't happen. I just go down there. If I got to do a show, get my money, and I'm gone. Okay. I remember watching uh, a show with uh, Reverend Run and his kids were supposed to go somewhere and he said did you call security to escort you to this facility he's like nah ma, nah dad i'm good i'm good we we good you know it's, it's it ain't gonna be like that he said listen son you are my son okay you are my son i have established myself i am known around the world I understand you want to have fun with your friends, but there are people that don't like my success. I may not have never met them in my life, never talked to them a day in my life. You need to have armed security with you when you go to this establishment. You understand what I'm saying? Nipsey Hussle was naked out there. And I can, I can let you know right now, if five, 10, 15 years, Crenshaw was in the same situation that it is today. And his kids began to frequent the, the, the marathon store, that, that whole little cul-de-sac area. Their lives would be a danger also. Come on, we've seen that happen with Michael Jordan's father. All right? We've seen that happen with Michael Jordan's father. They targeted that man. You know, there's a lot of other celebrities that got targeted. Their kids got targeted. Bill Cosby's son, he got targeted. You know, if they can't hurt you, they're going to hurt your kids. If they can't touch you. They're going to touch your kids. And what I'm, what I'm trying to share is that if you guys have street knowledge, if you guys have street knowledge, you grew up in the hood, you grew up in the inner city, you grew up in the projects, you grew up in the ghetto, and you you know these things it is your job to teach your kids the, the ways of the street because a lot of these young kids think it's cool as fuck to go out in the hood and be amongst you know the straight gangsters not, not knowing that that nigga over there got beef You get caught in the crossfire because you're hanging out with a dude that already had beef before you even showed up in the picture. Y'all need to put your kids up on game like this. This is the type of game that we learned in the hood. You can't buy that. You can't read that in no books. You can't buy that in the store. That type of street knowledge is indispensable. Because one thing about the hood is that the code stays the same. You have a couple of stragglers that, that switch it up on you. But for the most part, the street code stays the same. That's interesting because you mentioned Baby and Wayne. For a while, they were living in Miami. Uh, I know Baby had a spot in L.A. and so forth. But you were saying they literally got ran out of Louisiana? They wasn't ran out. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me clear it up. Nobody ran them. You know, it's just hatred and being mindful of your situations. You know, Baby was a G in the streets, man. Baby, was, from what I know, Baby was a G in the streets. And you always got haters. You always got people coming back. I want I want to get that reputation off you to beef with you or hate you. And, you know, like, you know, that was a smart move them moving to Miami. You know, in New Orleans, somebody going to try you, man. I don't care who you is. You know, these dudes on that H out there, these, this, how, these dudes going to try you, man. So, you know, you got you to gotta, you gotta be out of sight, out of mind for these guys, man.
You know, I, 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 got, I, got, I got millions, you know. Why, 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 why would I surround myself with people who after me for no reason? You know, baby them been going through that since they was in New Orleans. They was beefing with all kind of um, different rappers and, you know, rappers, you know, hey, niggas hating, niggas getting money, niggas, niggas gonna hate you in your city. You know, and I advise everybody, once they get money, get out they city, man, because that's where the hatred gonna come. You know, people be like, that's how I was at first, you know. I ain't, nigga ain't running me. I ain't going nowhere. And I ain't going nowhere. I'm boosted. I, I don't bag down from nothing. Nah, it's not about it being bagging down. It's about being smart, man. It's about being here for your kids and being smart, you know. It's crazy when you say most rappers get killed in their city. I start thinking Bankroll Fresh got killed in Atlanta. Shane Struggs got killed in Queens. We can go back who? Soldier Slim killed in Louisiana. Big L killed in Harlem. The Biggie and Tupac thing. They were traveling at the time, but everybody else. Oh, Jam Master J was killed in his own studio in Queens. Right, right. It's facts, man. It's not what I'm speaking is facts. You know, those are the guys, those are the guys who would want to hurt you, those guys, those guys who've been looking at you your whole life and building up envy. They build up envy to where they can't do nothing now. They can't, they can't stop you from getting money. You don't want to be their friend or associate. You can't come in their crew and get any kind of money. They're, they're too big for you to even try to beef with. So you know what? I'll just take your life. That's how that's that's that, that's how the crooks look at it, bro. That's how evil evil get in them so much to where they say, "I just won't see him dead." It's the only way we can. It's the only way we can get rid of him, man. And that be the people in your own city who develop the envy for you. You go somewhere else, man. You a star. You a star to them. You are you a celebrity to them. You know, and and, that, and that's just facts, man. It's just facts. And I'm gonna I'm gonna keep saying it. You know, if I was you, I'd get out. I'd get out the city, man. Thank you guys for tuning in, by the way. I don't know, something's happening to my feed where I'm unable to read your comments, but leave your comments. Um, I'll address them uh, on probably a later video. The Wi-Fi here is kind of fucked up. But again, so that is one thing that I learned is that, look, man, I could help out the hood. I could still touch the hood without being in the hood. And I don't even have that type of celebrity or 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 stature at the moment but i know once i do establish that type of celebrity that type of stature i can't move the same way i did when i was living in the hood that's it, it's, it doesn't make sense i don't care how many gwgs that i know the second thing i learned is that you always got to watch out for that snake in your, snake in the grass that it's close to you. I, if you guys remember in my previous videos, I always say that that metaphor, that saying, keep your friends close but your enemies closer, the first person that is going to stab you in the back is your enemy. So if you keep him too close, it's not going to take him much effort to slide that knife in your back. It won't take him that much effort for him to slide that knife in your back because you kept your enemy too goddamn close, way too close. Who's a, who's a person that got killed by someone that was very close to him? You guys remember uh, Selena? You guys remember Selena, the the uh, Hispanic singer, the beautiful um, Hispanic singer? J-Lo J played her in a movie. Who killed her? Who shot her in her hotel room? The person that was in charge of her fan club, who was working closely with her. Who was working closely with her. Who's another person that got killed uh, because they felt that they needed to be around people um, no matter, you know, what level of stature they were in. John Lennon. John Lennon from the Beatles. They killed that man in front of his building. Many people in his corner said, dude, you can't live there. 
you're too known you're too accessible for you to be living there and what happened a deranged fan walks up to him and shoots him shoots him dead a deranged fan listen I, like I said, like this, this hit me differently. This, this whole Nipsey hustle hit me different. I've been, I've been in a daze with this whole thing. I know I'm not the only one. I'm seeing the type of media coverage, the type of press that uh, his death is getting, the global impact that his death has, and that's what tells me that this man did not have to be in Crenshaw, in the middle of Crenshaw like that to make his presence felt. He was a boss already. He could send people. So as you guys are in on your rise to success and you're achieving more and more and more success for your safety and your kids' safety, because unfortunately... Some people will say, yeah, Nipsey Hussle stood up like a G. He saw the nigga come with the gun, you know what I mean? And he was like, what you going to do with the gun? And a nigga, nigga popped off. I know personally from my hood, straight up gangsters that did stuff like that and got killed. Rest in peace, twin. Dude came up to him. Pulled the gun out on him. The twin told him, what you going to do, shoot me? And the nigga shot. Another person that I know who had a very close friend murder him. Rest in peace, Doobie. Shot him in, a, in, in the schoolyard of PS-167. Real cool dude shot Doobie with his own gun. And he knew him. Listen, man. When you reach a certain status, a certain level of success, you have to remove yourself, man. You have to move different. And God forbid, God forbid pride and ego keeps you in situations, in peer pressure. Pride Ego and peer pressure keeps you doing things that you know you should not be doing. Yeah, man, it's fucking sad, you know? Have you seen Paid in Full? I just interviewed AZ Faisan. He's the one that played Ace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the real guy that was in it. Remember that one scene where they ran up on him and beat him in the face and made him open up the safe and shot him? He told me the story behind that situation. I got shot in the head twice, man, and five people was in, in that situation with me. You know, three people died and uh, three people lived. I, mean, I knew guys... exactly who one cat was. Okay. I knew, you know, the cat, Kev, Kevin Clark, I knew it was him. The, the boy, your sister's boyfriend. Yeah, I knew it was him. It's crazy how sometimes other people around you or the people you try to help are the most dangerous people. Have you had a lot of your friends turn against you? Yeah, um, man, I've been through all that. I just dropped a song when I was saying, uh, I'd been through the paid and full stuff. Uh, my best friend, Bleak, who I'm naming my next tape after. Uh, my other friend, my other, we was like this, all three of us. He on a murder charge for Bleak. Just like the Peyton Fool shit, man. Uh, I've been through it all with, 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 you know, my enemies used to be my boys. You know, in middle school, we was cool. You know, I went through a situation, one of my guys, we was we was like this, man, but when I started rapping and got more than got more than him, he became jealous of me. You know, he was my big dog, but when I got started rapping, he became he became envious of me, man. And he just changed on me, man. And the rest is history, but uh that's just how it be, man. It be those guys, man, who who develop so much hate. Things that we face. You can't move the same way no more.
You can't move the same way no more. You become a target. Your kids become targets. People look like Nipsey Hussle was sitting on millions. All you needed was a couple of dusty niggas to ki try to kidnap his kids and hold them for ransom. I know, I know G'd up niggas that don't have half of what Nipsey Hussle had. And their family got kidnapped for a ransom on some just some street shit. That, and they don't have half the money that Nipsey Hussle had. And their family got kidnapped, duct taped everything. Feds had to come in and, and, and mediate the whole situation, negotiate the terms and all that. This is how real it is. So imagine you're not only uh, wealthy, but you also have notoriety. You're also famous. You definitely can't move the same way no more. Don't let nobody punk you out and scare you and say, like, no, nah, you ran away from the hood. Nigga, I, I got to help the hood from afar. Because jealousy and envy is out here. You can smell it. I seen I seen niggas getting you know stabbed and shot over girls, dude. Over hood rats. You think they ain't gonna do it for some money or some fame? Come on, y'all. All right. So you got uh, got to watch the people in your corner. You got to you got to keep your, your 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 circle super tight, super tight. The more successful you get. The more tight your circle gets, the more you have to put people in place. You have to put security in place. You got to get bodyguards. You got to do whatever you got to do to stay. Because unfortunately, now we don't have that brother to continue the works that he was doing. And shout out to Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon is going to pick up the documentary that um, Nipsey Hussle was planning to uh, complete. But you have to understand, this brother was crushing toes. He was stepping on people's toes. He was stepping on uh, medical mafia toes. Um, he he was just he was just a G'd up dude, but very conscious. That's a deadly combination. If you have charisma and you got street street cred, you you can influence a lot of people. You can influence a lot of people. Damn, I wish I could read you guys' comments, man. I know you guys dropping some heat on here, but this stupid, janky-ass internet will not allow me to read your comments. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Please still leave your comments. I'll read through every single last one of them. When I get into a better area with a better Wi-Fi, I'll definitely address them. I may make a part two where I can uh, address more of the comments in this section, but drop me your comments. Ladies and gentlemen, and drop that heat. Let people know what this deal is. What have you learned from this situation? We can't let this brother die in vain like that. We can't. There's a lot of lessons to be learned from this situation. There's times that we will entertain a hater. We know this motherfucker is a hater, right? We know this person is a hater, and we entertain them. Why? Why do you continue to entertain a person that you know that don't like you? You know this person don't like you. But you keep you let this person hang around you, know about your business, you answer that person's phone calls. This person, you know they're infiltrating information out of you. They don't wish you the best. Matter of fact, they're looking to snatch your crumb before you get it. You know, like I said, man, there's a lot of good brothers that died in the hood that wanted to give back to the hood. You had Jam Master J, you had Freaky Ty, you had um, Chinks. Oh, that was French Montana's dude. He was just going in the hood to the store to grab something to drink. Three o'clock in the morning, they capped him. They shot this dude right in front of his car.
He can't even go in the hood, his own hood, to get something to drink from the corner bodega. Come on, man. Like, this hood thing ain't nothing to play with. And for my millennials, if you got young kids, you know, share this video with them, man. But, you know, I talk to the youth sometimes, and, like, the hood ain't no joke. The hood ain't nothing to play with. Those real lions, tigers, and bears out there, baby. They'll, 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 they'll murk you, have blood on their timberlands, and go to the party and go to a party later on that night and feel no way. There's a level of desensitized, desens, you know, they're desensitized from a lot of things. They're desensitized from a lot of crimes and a lot of things that would cause trauma because they've seen it so much. This is where I say, you know, like post-traumatic stress disorder. I know I suffer from that because I, I've seen too much at a young age. And there's no way I should be seeing that much murder, chaos, and destruction at a young age like that. I should be playing t-ball or, you know, doing gymnastics or, you know, playing in the schoolyard and playing in sandcastles. I shouldn't be seeing people getting carried you know, by two people because they got stabbed up. I shouldn't see somebody get shot in the head. I shouldn't see those type of things. I shouldn't see someone getting stabbed in the neck. That's not, that's war. So after a while, after seeing a lot of that stuff, you become desensitized. After a while, and I kid you not, when I moved to Chicago uh, from Brooklyn, I moved to uh, an area with my uncle, and it was the weirdest shit that I wasn't hearing gunshots every day. It, 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 it almost made it uncomfortable for me to sleep because I was so used to hearing gunshots. Like, gunshots would help me go to sleep. And then I moved somewhere where I don't hear gunshots, then I move somewhere else where I start hearing birds chirping, and that drove me crazy. I was like, this ain't right. This ain't right. You know, I'm I'm like become, get, getting a nervous breakdown because I'm hearing birds chirp. You understand? Because I'm so used to hearing chaos and screaming and ambulance and, and, and police cars and gunshots and people screaming and kids yelling and fights breaking out and broken glass and people getting stabbed. I'm so used to hearing that level of chaos on a daily basis that hearing birds chirp outside my window was driving me crazy. To this day, it's still nerve wracking. I, I, I want birds to shut the fuck up when I hear them. So that's why I say, if you guys have knowledge, of, if you have knowledge of self and you have street knowledge, like you, you grew up in the streets and stuff like that, school your kids. School your kids, man. Don't get so bougie and, and out of touch that you don't put your kids up on game. You heard? You got to put them up on game. Have to. Their life depends on it. And you don't teach them to be hood like you, or but you teach them to understand the streets. You teach them to understand that we are at war out here. That like like there's a racial war, spiritual war. You have to put them up on game while they walk out into this world blind. And some smooth talking motherfucker is gonna have her dancing on a pole. Some corny, dusty nigga's gonna have him selling rocks on a corner. So peace, love, and happiness to you guys. I ain't even gonna talk about that Kodak Black dude. That nigga was just whack anyway. Um, that, that was so disrespectful what he said to about you know Lauren London. That he he apologized, but you know. The, He's a goof troop. I don't even want to give him too much light. But one thing I do want to say is that there are many gems 
unfortunately, we lost a good brother in this situation, but there's a lot of gems that we can learn from this situation. This guy was, he was building a restaurant in his, in his hood. This is going to be a nice Creole restaurant in that little strip right there. Um, he had the stem, you know, vector, vector 90, which, you know, that was huge. It was a STEM uh, program. Uh, then he, you know, he had the marathon, letting people know that, hey, this microwavable society that you think it's out here, that's not where it's at. Life is a marathon, man. You have to pace yourself. You have to, you know, train, study, do all of these things, man, for a marathon. This isn't a sprint. You know, he had the marathon closing, which that was open in itself. He was working on documentaries, movies. This guy was so progressive. I think that's what hurts me the most is that he was so progressive. And he he did everything that the hood taught us to do. The hood taught us, yo, once you make it out, you come back to the hood and you give back to the hood. But they never said you come back and lay your head back in the hood. You know what I'm saying? And they, they never said how much you should frequent the hood. That's the code of the streets. And sometimes it gets misinterpreted. You can, you can still make your presence felt. Make, you can use your dollars. Look, man, um, Bob Marley funded the, the, the Babylon fight in Africa. With his album sales, he wasn't even in Africa. He took his record money and funded, you know, the Babylon fight out there. You can take your money and do amazing things and put people in place without having to be in those situations. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's the biggest lesson for us all because we all would love to see our culture win to be more successful, to progress, to win, win, win. But as you become more and more successful, you have to move different, ladies and gentlemen. You got to move different, man. You just got to move different. You, you can't, look, look, let me tell you something, man. There ain't nothing more fragile than a black man's ego. Ain't nothing more fragile than a black man's ego. We're fragile. That's why we so quick to te tear your head off. Because <clears throat> when somebody G checks us and we feel that we should have known that or you're coming.